All right. Thanks for joining. My name is Michael Ocampo, Ecosystem Alliance Manager at Astera Labs. And my topic today is accelerating AI and ML with CXL attached memory. Before I get started, just want to say thank you to the Memory Fab Fabric Forum for inviting me. Um, it's always good to talk about CXL, all the innovations it brings and the benefits for AI inferencing and many other applications. Um, so I was, as I was putting together this presentation, I was <clears throat> playing with some AI tools uh, such as Llama 3, and I put in this prompt improving GPU utilization with CXL. And this image that you see on screen is literally the, the first image that was generated from, from the AI model. And it's, it's kind of uh, interesting because you see all these orange cables that are interconnecting these servers. And it reminds me of one of the products that we, we make at Estera Labs called our Aries Smart Cable Modules, which uh, basically helps to extend the reach of PCIe and CXL over seven meters. So I thought it was a pretty interesting image to include into the presentation as uh, we lead into the main topics here. Um, which include AI inferencing, memory requirements, um, you know, the trends that we're seeing for AI inferencing servers and uh, why it's important to improve the IO efficiency for uh, accelerating uh, AI. And um, we did various testing with our own Leo CXL memory controller. And um, we were looking at all the data and trying to make sense of it. And we feel that we can really optimize AI inferencing with the help of CXL. And um, we can help to scale out LLM instances with CXL. Um, so looking forward to sharing this data with you. Um, you know, most people are familiar with LLM training or AI training. Uh, but not a lot of people are really talking about LLM inferencing and the amount of memory that's required for it. So this chart on the left actually is from um, Dan Rominovitz, who presented at the OCP Global Summit in 2023. And it, it effectively gives a good illustration of what the workload requirements look like for AI, AI inferencing. You can see it's very uh, memory capacity and bandwidth bound, as well as very latency sensitive, which means if you try to scale out, you know, with some kind of uh, standard protocol like Ethernet or, or Infiniben, um, it, it may not be the best way to optimize the performance because um, the, the use cases require near real time or on demand to get the AI insights. Um, you can see it's basically trying to decode data as efficiently as possible. So some examples would be like GPT, um, OPT, Llama, Mistral. All of these are very memory intensive. And so the reason why it's so memory intensive is because it, there's a KB cache that's effectively storing the keys and values of all the previous tokens that were generated from, uh, let's say a prompt that you enter in something like a chat GPT. And what binds that is the context window. So that's setting the boundary for the KV cache itself. And this uh, workload um, that I'm, I'm speaking of, it, it consumes a significant amount of memory in the order of about one megabyte per token. And, and this, this information is um, gathered from a really good article written by Pierre Leinhardt uh, called LLM Inference Series, uh, focused on the KV caching. And so, um, you know, of course, the KV cache size really depends on the precision of the model. So Llama 3.1 recently came out and that's uh, its original precision is FV16. And the model itself it, it requires about 810 gigabytes of memory. And um, beyond the model, the, the KV cache itself is huge, uh, depending on how many users or how, how long the prompt is and what the output is. So 
a fun example would be, let's say you wanted to um, ask a question about 10 novels, that the, the amount of information in those novels would equate to about a million tokens, which is about one terabyte of memory. So this is a pretty big problem that we're trying to solve with CXL. Fundamentally, if you look at the system architecture, on the left, you have more of a traditional look of the basic computing elements. You know, you've got a CPU, you got the local memory, you got your storage. And uh, for a lot of these AI uh, workloads that rely on NVIDIA or AMD, the, the libraries and the drivers and the accelerators are really centered on the GPU. And so when you, you're generating all this KV cache, you've got to store that somewhere and then be able to read from it very quickly and efficiently. And the, the system that we observed actually has the KV cache stored on cache by default. And so what ends up happening is that the CPU becomes the, the bottleneck. And so uh, ideally you want to have uh, a sizing of the KV cache or the response. And you can kind of limit that on your on a front end if you're involved on the actual application side. But if you don't have those controls, I mean, you're, you're really at the mercy of how big the prompt is. So... Um, the local memory may not be enough, and then you end up having to use the storage for uh, caching, which is a lower performance, of course, compared to CXL. So when we did the tests um, that I'm going to show later on, we effectively um, placed the tensors on the CXL memory so that you can really drive the AI inferencing performance with this very high performance cache tier to supplement the local memory. Um, so on the left-hand side is a system that we won an award for at Flash Memory uh, Summit, or now it's called the Future of Memory and Storage. And um, we won an award for the, the total solution actually in a um, partnership with Supermicro and a Memverge. So the system that we use is the AMD-based system, AS4125GS-TNRT. The local system, in, uh, it supports 24 DIMMs. And on the backside, it can support up to um, eight GPUs. The case that we tested, we had two GPUs on one socket as a baseline, and then we had a couple drives um, which I'll, I'll share more information on the configuration on the next slide. But what ended up happening is we had slower time to insights with the NVMe cache, higher CPU utilization. And because of the higher utilization on the CPU side, that limited the uh, ability to run concurrent LLM instances for servers. So... With CXL, we can we can boost the time to insights by 40%. We can lower CPU utilization per query by 40% and increase the LLM instances um, by 2x. So here's, here's the data. Um, so how to read this graph is you hear you see here on the y-axis you've got the GPU utilization, and on the x-axis you've got time. So if you follow this orange line, which is basically the, um, it's, it's, it's a flex gen engine that is uh, driving the OPT66B hugging face model. And a bunch of queries are, are coming in. Uh, the run parameters on the are actually listed on the bottom right of this slide. You see prompt length is 512, gen length is 8. GPU batch size equals 24, and, and the number of batches equals 12. So that number 12 is, is key because when we change that number lower or higher, that would generate a lot of KV cache. Again, this is beyond the this system uh, requirement for, the, for, for driving the model itself, which is already using 122 gigabytes of memory. 
and then you have uh, all these um, these batches of prompts and outputs that that we're asking the system to to process. And that query time without CXL is taking up to 700 seconds. Um, and then when you we tested it with with CXL, we're getting the full utilization of two GPUs. Okay, so then now that basically helps to uh, improve the time to insights by 40%. You can see the blue line drops down to 40%. So just looking at the, the hardware configuration to really understand what's going on is, again, we've got one CPU that is supporting two NVIDIA L40S GPUs. So each of them have 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 or 96 gigabyte total. And then the local memory is 768 gigabytes. And then again, you've got the RAID 0 of two PCIe Gen 5 SSDs. So what ended up happening is the KV cache exceeded the local memory as, as well as the GPU memory. And then it, it spilled out into disk essentially for for the KV cache uh, read and write operations. And that's what was really pulling down the performance. And then so with, with CXL, we were helping to improve the IO efficiency. And so that's where the gains are coming from. So on the flip side of this workload, we're looking at the CPU utilization here. So uh, the y-axis, if you notice, has changed to CPU utilization. And so at peak, it was about 65%. So a lot of people don't really realize that um, the IO operations from, from disk to the GPU is quite expensive from a system resource perspective. And, um, you know, if we could reduce that CPU utilization, we could try to run multiple instances. So that's, that's where we're coming from with this slide, which effectively gives you a kind of a theoretical look of how many LLMs could you actually support um, if we could reduce the CPU utilization. Well, let's, let's go one by one here. Uh, so what we're showing here is the memory requirement for um, what we tested, right? So we have a KV cache and then the OPT66B model, it required up to uh, basically one terabyte of memory. It's approximate number, just to keep the math simple. And you can see here in green was the GPU memory was filled, the local memory was filled. Again, there's 768 gigabytes just for local memory. And then uh, without CXL, it basically spills out on the disk, as I mentioned earlier. And with that one instance without CXL, that is using up 65% of the CPU utilization. Now with CXL, again, the CPU utilization is uh, lower at 25%. The theoretical configuration here, what we're saying here is if we scaled up all the resources, let's say we're able to um, include up to eight GPUs and then max out the local memory and um, you know, attach more CXL cards, you would essentially get to where we're heading to at, uh, on the very, very last column of this graph. But before we get there, without a CXL, you essentially would hit a CPU bottleneck, right? Because all those those uh, IOs and all those weights and the memory swaps um, be, uh, with the disk and, and the local memory, you're going to see a tremendous amount of um, pressure on the CPU. So by having two VCXL instances, you really wouldn't be able to scale beyond more than two LLM instances, theoretically. Whereas with CXL, you'd be able to support up to four instances. So you can see here, um, we've scaled up all the memory requirements um, accordingly. You can see in purple, there's four OPT66B bars stacked onto each other and then the orange bars represent the KV cache stacked up and um, you can see that we should have 
headroom on the CPU to effectively support all of the LLM instances um, and, and possibly more, right? We would have to test that configuration to, to know more. And just for completeness, you can see all the uh, parameters that were, were uh, used in the test. So it's batch size of 12, prompt length of 512, generate, generation length of eight, and GPU batch size of 24. So the key benefits are, again, faster time to insights by 40%, 40% lower CPU utilization per query, which helps to improve the concurrency of LLM instances per server uh, up to even 2x or more, just depending on, on the, the query size. So that uh, concludes my presentation. I'm happy to take any, any questions.